Before we begin, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell to receive notifications. In the late 80s to the early 90s, UK hip-hop was experiencing some of its best moments with many groups releasing records that would someday become cemented forever in UK hip-hop history. However, quite a few of those groups only ever made one or two records, stamped their authority for a short while, and then vanished. Many years later, die-hard fans still obsess over some of those groups, and their music, but know very little about them. South East London-based duo Cobalt 60 is one of those groups who made their impact, then disappeared. I've had quite a few people requesting for me to go ahead and find these guys and bring them into the sofa chat for an interview. And guess what? I found them. And here they are. None other than Cobalt 60. <laughs> What's up, mate? <laughs> Yo, guys, I don't even, you know what? Are we allowed? Are we allowed? <laughs> are we allowed? We're allowed. We're allowed. Had to do that. Right, see, I had to do that basically because I know these guys from very early days, um, you know, because we come from the same neighborhood and we grew up all going to the same clubs and basically even linked up in producers' flats and houses and whatever and, and basically seeing that we had a passion for the same thing. Right, so guys, where do you want to start? How did it all start? I mean, I, I started going to, to see um, Dazzle Fresh. Dazzle Fresh was the only, was the first guy to have two turntables mm. right so yeah. we were waiting to practice at dazzle nights day mm. and night through dazzle we met master mix uh master mix was sort of you know at the time producing stuff for cook crew merlin other artists as well um i wanted to get involved just on the dj in front he said to me no you should basically start producing because you've got an ear for music mm -hmm. i found colin yeah accidentally on purpose kind of nicked him <laughs> To, 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 as, a, as a DJ MC duo and um, yeah that's, that's, that's how we started really mm. yeah. Okay. yeah what about what about for you I was kind of making stuff on my own I was doing a lot of tape deck edits and at school we were just all into it was like four of us basically it was all into hip hop into electro break beats whatever mm -hmm. and um, I was I was I was getting really good actually mm. at, at doing tape deck edits on my dad's stereo, which I broke about <laughs> four or five times, but um, he doesn't know. He still doesn't know that. Um, <laughs> and uh, it got to the point where it kind of the two kind of crossed over. So I was doing these these kind of weird little tape deck loops, and then I met Sean, and then I took a tape deck edit of Concrete Show, mm -hmm. and I played it to Sean, and then you played it to Master Mix, and I can still remember. Mm. <laughs> the shock <laughs> from you two when yeah. when when you played it to Richard yeah. uh, at, the, at the flat where we first met you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's kind of the short short version. The short yeah. version yeah. of it. But I yeah. think I think um, a couple of years later, when obviously we got to know each other, you, you used to come to my flat. I came to your flat a couple of times. Uh, your mom's house, if I mm. remember correctly, and you played me the original. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, but I, honestly, I don't remember it now, but at the yeah. time I was like, wow. You know what? Funny thing is, I listened to it last night. Yeah. Um, and it's still pretty advanced for a tape deck edit, considering it's all the timing is all done by hand yeah. and it's analog and it's literally pause buttons. <laughs> So um, <laughs> it's, it's still, I'm just like, man, that's still pretty good, man. Like, Do you feel like in our time, creativity was different to what it is now? Yeah, um, because I'll tell you what the problem is. Uh, I was saying to Sean on the way up here, actually, I've got a, like, a, I still kind of mess around with music now, mm -hmm. but um, it's almost too easy to make music. So you don't, there's no, there's nothing special about it. Mm -hmm. So Whereas when I'm making all these crazy tape deck loops and stuff, and because it, it was so, it was actually quite difficult to do, so it felt more impressive. Now that I've got like Logic and all the other stuff, like I just hardly ever touch it because it's like I can do that any time I want. Like mm. it, it takes ten seconds to do an idea, whereas before, yeah. right? Here's a good example. I was saying to Sean, like with Master Mix when he lived in Deptford, mm -hmm. I would walk. What's that? Catford to Deptford's what? Mm. Four miles? Five miles? Mm. Mm -hmm. And he didn't have a phone either, so I'd just get records and just walk to his house. Mm. On and, off and chance. Hope he'd be there. And just yeah, off chance he'd right. be there. I, I remember that. Right. And sometimes if he wasn't, he'd just, yeah, yeah, yeah. just walk back home. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, but that's how, that's how kind of, that's how you did it, really. And, like, it was, it was difficult. 
but it was, I don't know, maybe because it was a lot more analog. It just, it, it just seemed like there was a lot more, I don't know, creativity going on. And yeah. Yeah. Whereas now, I don't know, it's still good, right? Because you've got expo, you can, you can do stuff like this, right? You can, you can, you've got exposure. You can, you can send your content around the world in a second. Yeah. Um, that's a good side. I don't know about the creativity. I don't know. I don't know. <coughs> it Maybe a it's a longer conversation. What's, what's, what's your opinion on, on that? Uh, my, my eldest mum braised 28, right? Yeah. And then, you know, got cassette tapers. Okay. Just <laughs> but I bet half the viewers only 28 that you yeah. know, watching today don't know what a cassette tape is. So yeah. to imagine what Colin's talking about doing, yeah. you know, recording something, pressing pause. <laughs> To spin this back on a turntable and pause and press it back and all this sort of stuff, but for what he did, <laughs> it was it was slightly different, which is why, you know, I suppose to a certain extent, concrete show was um, recognised as a single because of that rewind. Yeah, I mean, but would you necessarily even think of that because you're not really hands on like it was? I think well, this is I think that's the I think that's the thing about hip hop. It was mm. a very hands on mm. kind of. Um, process to going and discovering yeah, process, a break yeah. beat you know being excited to go home and play this record mm -hmm. and spin it back do a few scratches then don't touch it again because you don't want to listen but you say that but um, you know when I was producing I was looking for things like the hissing and at the end of the record the yeah, crackling yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. I was using elements like uh -huh, that in uh -huh. the in the stuff so yeah. that's what I'm saying. The creativity was different. We weren't looking for a clean sound. We wanted a dirty sound. Yeah, yeah, but you that's, I mean? that's, you know, right. You know, how many times of, how many copies of Good Times have I got? Yeah. We're, we're, we're now, when you play that record, all you hear is shh. You know, to, to obviously, I've still got a pristine copy of the record yeah, as well, yeah. you know. So, yeah, we buy two records, but some of the break beats that we were buying, you can't buy two copies of, you know. Yeah, so yeah, you, ain't gonna, rare. you ain't gonna get that back yeah. again, you know. Nah. In like even Tales from Order, like mm. the yeah. Andrew Hill. Some of that was tape, though. Some, that of those, some of those weren't vinyl, they were tapes. No, well, so I went and sourced the vinyl, that was my yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I used to just mm. leave the, um, I used to listen to, I think it was Jazz FM. Like late night, yeah, and just leave the tape running yeah. and go to bed, and then just go and search the tape yeah. um, in the morning and see if there's anything interesting. And it yeah. might have been Giles Peters and like late night, I can't remember. Yeah. But I used to do it with um, I used to do it with videos as well. I used to uh, see a late night if it had like it was like a seventies horror or something like trashy, <laughs> not like the soundtrack <laughs> might have been good. I just used to set the timer yeah. and then just. It was it was clever. It yeah, was like yeah. you know what we were doing was innovative. Most people saw you as the rapper and mm. you as the DJ and the, and then Master Mix as the producer. But yeah. you just basically said that you pretty much produced that yeah. and Master yeah. Mix just basically finalized it and Master did Mix everything. Master Mix put our stuff together. That's yeah. what Master yeah. Mix and, 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 and Master So you, you both did. produced Concrete Show? Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly that. Um, can I, can I ask a favor? Mm. Right. Your voice was so bloody unique on that track, <laughs> right? Like, it Go stood on. out. Like, there was two things that stood Well, there was three things that stood out. First, the beat was just banging. It was, it was heavy. The next thing that caught my attention was the rewind. We were all doing it, but no one thought about, you know, when... when <laughs> putting it in a record. Yeah, yeah no one yeah. thought about putting it in a record. Yeah. You know, while, while I'm there looking for crackles and, like, you know, girlfriends going, wash the fucking dishes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. you you were you were doing the spin backs, but the other thing that that was amazing about what you were doing, and I'm not and I'm not excluding you from this, but your voice yeah. was terrible, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. That's why you were the DJ, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but your voice was so unique. So, mm. for everyone who is a fan that is going to watch this, can you do me a favor <laughs> and recite maybe even four bars as an a cappella right now in that voice? You know what? I don't know if I can remember. Hold on. Let me just try and think. All I can remember is a convention is too damn conventional. So I upstage my attack before I go on my show. Power rap. Nah, I've gone blank. Go <laughs> blank. All right. All right. So, so just do that line about this is just. This is just one from the concrete show. And do you know the story behind that as well? No, I don't. Yeah, yeah tell us. All right. So Master Mix was putting together. An album of UK, I'm getting this right, aren't I? That's right. UK groups or MCs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's like a, it's yeah. gonna be like a posse cut or whatever. So where was my invite? 
I don't know, man. <laughs> no, he did, he did mention <laughs> that. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. no, he did, he did mention yeah, yeah. it, but it never happened, did it? Yeah. No, it so, didn't. Yeah. No, yeah. So, and that, the album was, for some reason, going to be called Concrete Show, wasn't it? And I don't know if I'm making this up to look good, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think Richard said to me, this might be the title track for the album. So yeah, I think yeah. I said we should call the whole thing Concrete, concrete Show. show. Yeah, that's I, right, think that's, yeah. I think that's what happened. Yeah. And that's why... In the song, it says this is just one from the concrete show because there's meant to be oh loads of different right. acts doing wow. doing uh, a, a song for, for this album, album yeah. okay. called Concrete Show. Was, was the lyric written before you came up with the title, or did you add that into the lyric? No, I it? think it was kind of like a joint thing. I think we, I, I think I suggested to ref, uh, to Richard uh, uh, we should call it Concrete Show. He's like, yeah. And then I kind of based the verse around the idea of it being a group album. I'm calling the album Concrete Show, is it to do with street music? Is it, what was it? I can't remember, to be honest, but um, it was kind of based around the idea of just being a bit kind of street, urban, kind of yeah. concrete buildings, mm -hmm. you know, okay. uh, that kind of environment, like, Where you know, from, yeah. graph, mm -hmm. walls, all that kind of stuff. So. Okay. so if Master Mix was living in Blackheath, say, for example, or Greenwich, it would have been called something like, uh, this is just one for the... A coffee shop show. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, exactly. Just the dance, right? I remember the other thing that was actually like ridiculously, you know, attention catching was your lyrics were just, it wasn't organized, if you know what I mean. There was mm -hmm. so much confusion going on. Yeah. Like if you didn't, if you weren't smart, you wouldn't be able to decipher what you were saying. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Cause it's, it's funny, we were talking about this in the car on the way up here. And um, I, I was saying that I actually, this might be the reason why Cobalt 60 didn't continue, because I don't really like writing lyrics. I really? Yeah, I don't, I don't mm. enjoy it. I enjoy making music. The music part is easy. Yeah. It's easy. So basically but you're telling words. us you don't like challenges. Uh, <laughs> oh, God, it's like a job interview, man. <laughs> yeah, <know that. laughs> um, yeah, basically. No, no, I, I don't enjoy the words part of it, even though yeah. I do in a way, but I but that's what made it I unique. wanted it to be as quick as the music, and it it just didn't always match up that way. Colin was always shy, though. Yeah, I was, we, we yeah, I was a to, bit... We had to push him out onto yeah, stage. Yeah, I, I was a music nerd as well. I was like, yeah. I, was like oh, I don't want to... But I had to, find, I had to find the equivalent of the music in words, and the only person I could figure out to do it was me. Damn. There wasn't anyone I thought who, was, who could match the music in a way that I saw it in my head. But I, I, I remember when I, when I came to your flat and we were talking... Mm. Right, and you were playing me stuff, and I was like, bro, you, you got to keep doing this, man, because mm. like, what you're doing is unique. Nobody else is doing it. Mm. Like, it, was, it was different. I still yeah. remember that conversation. And you, then you turned around and said to me, when you were walking up to the house, did you see that sneaker pimps um, poster? Mm. And then you started telling me, that's what I'm doing now. Mm. Next minute, I'm seeing a guitar in your hand. Mm. And I started thinking, right, I'm, I'm going to be looking forward to this because I know whatever you do, it's like yeah, whatever all the straight. rock bands do and all that, you're going to do something completely different, but do it in their fashion, mm. but just add your twist to it and it's going to be interesting. Mm. You know what I mean? But then I waited 30 years and I've still not heard a thing. Yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I'll tell you what kind of happened. Um, one, well... Where are we now? 2021, right? So, um, 19, can mid you, 90s. Can, can you do me a favor? Mm. Don't don't say where are we now. Okay. Right? Do it like Terminator. Like, what year is it? <laughs> <laughs> Come with me if you want to live. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, go I'm on. thinking about Terminator. Yeah. Such, such <laughs> film, especially the second one is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so in the mid '90s, I kind of, um, I kind of started drifting away from hip hop slightly, and I went into this kind of world where I was like, I really like the sound of guitars mm. and how that was all put together. I tell you what, I just remembered. I was in your car, uh -huh. and you said to me, there's a song you need to hear. And I was like, what is it? Because I think it's by this group, Nirvana. Uh, I was making, I was, I was say making, I was kind of experimenting with guitars and stuff, and just, I like the kind of idea of it. And then um, I kind of felt like hip-hop was changing as well. Like, it was mid-90s, it was getting more like kind of Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, kind of party, mm -hmm. soulful music. Mm -hmm. I didn't really. I wasn't really into that. I was more into the kind of more experimental, 
kind of public enemy, Bella Soul kind of Tribal Quest stuff. And it felt like it was changing. So I felt like I was going in another direction anyway mm. for two reasons. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of made I made this I made I made some music mm -hmm. like on my own. Uh, I'll play them to you at some point. Yeah, that'd be good. Would you um, Would you be willing to share it with the audience? Yeah, yeah, they're instrumentals though, so it doesn't mm. matter. It's like the I thing mean, is, if if it's anything on the level of what you did with Concrete Show, then I, mean, I think your fans are gonna want to hear it. Well, you know, as you know, I was talking to a, a mutual friend about mm. releasing some. Mm -hmm. um, some instrumentals, which is, I think, is still going to happen. In that list of those demos is the Concrete Show tape deck edit. I was listening back to these tracks, and they're they're, they're pretty insane. Like, it's it's kind of a shame they they didn't have any vocals. But um, they right, are. So, they are so really you know, my next question is going to be. No, I'm not going to do vocals for oh, it. <laughs> 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 it's, 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 everything's moved on. It's, it wouldn't be worth it. Why yeah. why would it be worth it? I mean, you know what? It's like when you get to a certain um, place in your in your life, in your mind, mm. uh, you do things for the pleasure of it. Mm. You know what I mean? So, mm. all right, I've got but, a question but it's, for you. it's whether you feel like it's going to be pleasure or if it's going to be a hassle. Yeah, 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 yeah. totally. We were having that same conversation yeah, exactly on the same way up thing, here. Yeah. Um, I got a question for you. Do you, all right? If I was to do vocals for them, do you have somewhere I could record them? I'll find you somewhere. Marlon! <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. We'll put so, him on the spot, innit? <laughs> no, I'm so, gonna, we'll, we'll, that, well, I'll keep that in mind then because I don't know, I've never really, no one's asked me to put vocals to him. Uh, Mate, who wants to hear a guy with a grey beard rapping? That's weird. <laughs> no, but you, you have to remember, like, your audience, your audience, right, grew up with you. And you never know, one of those, I don't know, like Nirvana might pick up on you and go, yo, I want that guy on my vocals, well, yeah, on my tracks. Super long shot, but. But I am in the process of putting some, some, um, some music together with a friend. I don't know, I don't think you know him, he's a producer. It's like a jazz thing, so mm -hmm. I've been working with him since What's last year. The, the production group's called Ethnic Boys. Okay. And the guy's name's Marcus. Right. Um, we've are, been, they, are they all ethnic by any chance? <laughs> um, good question. Uh, I only know he is, but um, okay. yeah, I've been so, so the other members of the group are faking it till they make it. Quite possibly. Yeah. I don't know if there is actually any other members, but uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, I've kind of still got my toe, but right. I don't know if I've explained that I'm doing a lot of art as well. So. Yeah, yeah. If you can imagine, I've kind of drifted away from hip hop a little bit. I'm doing this guitar thing. I'm going to festivals and getting fucking pissed and having a laugh. Um, in the 2000s, I kind of I'm starting working in retail and stuff because you know, kind of I'm kind of really out of music. Mm -hmm. But that's when I start getting back into art and mm -hmm. stuff. And so that kind of starts building up momentum. Mm -hmm. And so now that's what I kind of do mm -hmm. with most of my time. And uh, like, so music is kind of like the hobby in comparison to the art, which is is kind of doing pretty well mm -hmm. so but I think the two kind of go hand in hand and I've always I always think about music always mm. always um, you know I, I nearly bought some equipment a couple of months ago okay uh, just to get back on the production now I've got guitars and keyboards and stuff in my so, house but so you got a good solid guitar collection and uh, two okay that's a solid collection because <laughs> I've got none two and one of them is battered but it's a really nice guitar to play so okay. i never i never say like i would never do music again because that's that's not the truth mm -hmm. i'm definitely i mean it sounds to me like somewhere in there you feel like you want to do it but something is stopping you everything kind of just fizzled out okay. like so it was just like, a passion thing everything yeah, changed richard went my way mark went another way yeah. mm. like you just had a kid and then yeah and then i don't know i, I was yeah i was i was just um Doing other things, playing, mm. playing guitar. I went, and, I went and did like a foundation in mm. music theory and stuff like that. So no. I kind of mm. looked at it from a different angle to mm. see how that worked. Mm -hmm. Something you said earlier just reminded me of when, obviously, I'm a fan of Jimi Hendrix, mm. and I, I, you know, I, I bought his biography and everything, and I read it, and yeah. he was the same. He didn't like his voice on on tracks, and mm. you know no, I mean? he didn't actually. You're right. Yeah. You're right. So some of the things you're saying kind of reminds me of the Jimi yeah. Hendrix mentality. Mm. Yeah, you know I mean, it's like he didn't really—he was shy. Mm. Yeah, you know I mean? 
the funny thing is when you're at music college, they tell you that Hendrix never went to music college. So never to get too caught up in theory and systems mm. of the way music works. Mm. Basically, the best advice I was ever given was you should learn how to play guitar so you can learn how not to play guitar. And that's, that's, that's kind of, um, that's how I, that's my approach with everything. You should learn something so you can just flip it on its head, basically. Mm. Uh, okay. Even even with visual. So, so it's like it's like saying um, you should have a girlfriend but not have a girlfriend. I don't know if I'd take it that far, to be honest. <laughs> Maybe have two. <laughs> learn how to have a girlfriend so you don't have a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Interesting perspective. Yeah, yeah, exactly. mm. well, yeah anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So your your names, um, obviously, you originally were Capone, Correct. which is what we all knew you as, yeah. but then very quickly you changed it to Cap One. That's right. Right, That's so right. why? Because uh, there is... DJ Capone in the States, and I was like, you know, at the time you're young in it. Oh, can't have a but, double. But why, but why Capone in <laughs> the first? Somebody can't be me. <laughs> right? yeah. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I had to done the imposter business. And, and we, but and but why Capone, Capone in the first Capone. place? Was it all gangster like nah, movies? Well, and, yeah, yeah. You know. I mean, yeah, that was my favorite type of movie. You know what I mean? Scarface is still my number one. Film. Thank you. It's, it's one of my you top three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One yeah, of my top yeah, five. Yeah, but then you're going to start talking no, God, failed, Godfellas. No, like, no, like, didn't win that night. There was nothing good about what you did in that No, it wasn't about that, man. It's the character, man. It was, the a, character, it was, the, it was on, a diehard man. character. It was Can like, we, even though I'm dead, you're going to remember me, man. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you're going to remember yeah. me. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a legacy. You know what I mean? None of that for a minute. Uh, no, he <laughs> no was, but he did he was, he was a crazy man. He was a crazy man. But yeah. you know, yeah. can I we can know. we just do a little bit of role play on that? What's that? So let, let's <laughs> go into the mode of man. fuck you, no, fuck you, yeah, no, fuck you, no, fuck you. Hold on, hold on. That's the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, you know what? Yeah, he's, he's starting yeah. to sound like a hater now. Yeah, well, you're a hater. You were envious. He had a tiger. Yeah, it's, <laughs> that's right, bro. This is one of those movies, isn't it? Yeah. It was inspirational at the time. Yeah. He's an idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's an idiot. He's a, he's a total idiot. So, 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 yeah, Cap One. So, Cap One. So, Cap One started. I mean, you know what? To be honest with you, Blade, throughout my life, I have to say, I've had so many DJ names. Mm. Cool SB, Cap One, Capone, Cap One, and then Big Bang, which was like a pseudo for me to just go out there and play garage okay. in all the nightclubs and nobody know who I am, so it's kind of yeah. cool. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but I mean, as Cap One, what did I do? We did uh, Cobalt 60, we did, um, I did She Rockers, uh, Jive Studios with Master Mix and mm -hmm. Martin, we did um, Sun and Noise, I mean, big up to Sun, DJ Sun, Jason, mm. yeah. because I mean, at the end of the day, without him, he actually pushed for us to release that record, you remember? Because we was yeah, like, he took it, he took on the shelf, on the shelf, on the shelf. <coughs> oh, you know, yeah. we're not signing here. We're not. He's like, just get it out there. So yeah, yeah, I think he was yeah, on the biggest side for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, and I mean, Sun and Noise themselves, full stop. You know, we got on their tracks. They got us to produce a couple of tracks mm -hmm. for them on their albums and stuff like that. Yeah, I think once I did the Crazy Mad Flow, mm -hmm. it was like, um, if that don't make any sort of form, because that was as commercial as I was gonna go with the mm -hmm. kind of beats, if you know mm -hmm. what I mean. And, you know, as you say, like, you know, if it was today, you'd have your YouTube channel, you'd have your mm. Insta channel, you'd be able to put it up everywhere so people can just mm -hmm. feed and find it. But it's like, you know, back in the day, you know what I mean? We weren't going to get played on the Ensign Radio or nothing like mm -hmm. that, you know? So, you make a video, well, we, we had it doesn't go our, nowhere. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we had to make our own noise, really. Like Yeah, yeah, know. most definitely. Well, I mean, we did. And... It's testimony to having us here today to know that there was some form of fan base because like it wasn't until about maybe i don't know six seven years ago someone said to me um have you searched for your record on youtube everything's on youtube and i didn't yeah, think yeah. of it and when i searched it and i looked and i saw like all of the comments and stuff mm. i was like i was like wow i was yeah. like you know it actually touched me i was like raw people actually recognized you know what yeah, we yeah, did yeah and um yeah, so it was it was it was it was good moments, you know, in the, in in memories about that. But yeah, moved on, family. It doesn't matter. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it goes I, already. I, I mean, nostalgia's good, mm. but... You know I did I mean? the like, DJing for a while with, with Garage. I was uptown playing in you know, all of the sort of nightclubs stuff mm. there. But it was Garage, you know. Yeah. It was just... Nothing like wrong with that. Was, well, no, it was still... I could still use my mixing skills on decks. That, mm -hmm. that was it for me. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted to do. Um, nothing more than that. But I mean, yeah, your, your name, um, Fort Apache. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, where, that was actually... Was, you were into Westerns. That's a good, that's a good link. Um, it actually is from a Western. I saw it on TV. It's something my dad was probably watching. And I used it as a crew name. But then I think whoever was in that crew disappeared. I can't remember who it was now. And I kept the name for myself. And then I was also into, you know, obviously into art and comics and that. And there's a... There's an artist called Vaughn Bode, mm -hmm. who um, a lot of his characters are used in the old, a lot of those old kind of subway art books and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like uh, anyway, this dude <coughs> drew a character called Cobalt Sixty. So now we know where the name came. That's from. That's where the name came from. Right. And I, I, I used to go up to Forbidden Planet and um, you know buy comics and stuff. And I, I found a Vaughn Bode Cobalt Sixty book, and because I loved all the artwork, and then it just kind of popped into my head I should use that name as the new name for the crew. Mm -hmm. So, and incidentally, Cobalt 60 is a character that lives in a dystopian, futuristic world. He wears a mask and he rides a dinosaur or something. And he's so if you followed that, you could have been the first MF I, Doom. I could have, I could have been, I could have been. I could have been. Think about it. You know what, I could have been. <laughs> Shit. You know what, stop the interview. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Wow, look how many trains you missed. Ah, oh, Jesus, I missed them all. Yeah. Yeah. Do, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. You know what I would have done? I've done that thing where you put on fake legs on a, on a dinosaur and you just... What <laughs> 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 I used to do, I'm not fucking cracker jack. You run out, run out and eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With a little mask and a, and a mic. <laughs> that would have, so, have been amazing. <laughs> but seriously. But, but, amazing. At, but on, a, on a serious note, though, I mean, do you have any regrets for stopping knowing that you had a fan base that was waiting eagerly and... Yeah, uh, a little bit. What um, I, I regret... I, I, missed the, I missed the tour in the Scotland flipping Yeah, that's what I was about to say. And, uh, the travel. Yeah, I we have, went to Belgium and I should have, I should have gone, I remember, gone do, you, do you remember the days when we used to hire coaches and we used to basically yeah, get one of the... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was, that was a funny oh, one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the baseball do you want to... The ba Listen, oh, no, no, I told you what I, I wasn't, listen, I, <laughs> sorry, I need to talk about this one, right? We, that Leicester show, we had two coaches, right? Yeah, that's right. And uh, if I remember, there was, you lot were on the same coach as us, you were on the front coach, right? Yeah. And I was standing there with my girlfriend, yeah. right? And I was talking to Madda, right? right? And we were there by the, by the entrance. Next thing I see is Madda pushes Jan out the way, right? And, and I'm like, what the fuck is he doing? I see a brick coming. Whoa! Yeah, and the brick would have hit her in the face, right? There was a brick, and it just oh, boom, bang, right? I don't remember exactly what happened, but you know, when me and Matter have spoken, we were kind of like, yeah, "Do you remember that?" And then yeah. he reminded me of some bits yeah. and pieces, and I'm like, "Shit, you're right." Jesus and Christ. I'll tell you where it started. I'm not going to mention the name of the group from London that started that trouble, mm. but it was a group from London, mm. right? And what happened is we were in a club. And I'm, I'm there talking to these guys, these mm -hmm. Rasta guys and whatever. Cool, really mm -hmm. nice guys mm -hmm. talking and they're going, yeah, can't wait for the show and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Then one of the other London crews that came down mm -hmm. let off a stink bomb in front of them. Mm -hmm. oh, I remember that. Right? They let, off, they, let, they let off this stink bomb. Turns out the guys I'm talking to are serious drug dealers. Mm -hmm. Yeah? But they're fans of hip-hop and they're fans yeah, of yeah, all yeah. of us. Right? So the guy goes to me, right, that was disrespectful, blah, blah, blah. He knew what he was doing. And he goes, you're cool. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a fan, blah, blah, I'm a fan. Of, mm -hmm. But you know what? You don't need to get on your coach after the show and fuck off because there's going to be problems. Wow. And I, I thought it was just talk. Mm. And then when I see everyone coming around the corner, it was like, oh, shit. Wow. <laughs> and then, but, but we couldn't hire a coach from that company ever again because the coaches got damaged. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, it was yeah, bricks yeah, and yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, of course I do, man. I saw <laughs> wow. the coach without the bricks window. So on the way back, I was nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I remember. I was nice on the way back. I come back and saw all of this mayhem, and I was like, what the fuck? I'm, like, I'm getting on that coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that. Uh, you know what was good about what 
you're rapping mm. is I couldn't understand a fucking word you were saying. <laughs> you're welcome. It's like there's something about it where you know all the words, but it's like, what is he actually trying to tell me? Right. Do yeah. you understand? It I was, can it tell was you deep. Now, it's 25 stories yeah. in one line. <laughs> this is yeah. what I'm saying. That's it's like, you know, what I, is he trying to like, tell when, me? I was like, okay, just an example. You know, I'm like, Colin, what the fuck's the size well be? Oh. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's like, no, that's the nuclear power station. That, uh, okay. <laughs> oh, now it makes sense. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> Yeah. Here yeah, you go. Yeah. That's just one example, yeah? <laughs> All right. But there was something interesting about it where you were just like, I don't get what you're saying. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but do yeah, you, yeah. But the question is, did you know what you were saying? Yeah, I was trying to be very cryptic because um, I was into, I was really into uh, the way Poster News rhymed. Mm. I used to like the way those guys put mm. their songs together. Mm. Um, so I, I, I kind of, I was kind of hiding in those kind of words. It was just more interesting to be a bit more, I don't know, um, what's the word I'm looking Mysterious. for? Mysterious. Mysterious, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I purposely made the lyrics kind of, or tried to make them as interesting as the music. That was, mm. that was, that was my and, and And the funny plan. thing is, the interesting came out of not being able to understand it. Seriously, you were one of those rappers where you had to be a scientist to understand what you were saying. <laughs> I mean, bring the microscope it's in, cryptic, like, break down every word. That's mm. what it was. So it, mm. was, it was interesting. How, how did you, when you were working with him and you were mm. coming up with the, you know, like the scratches and whatever, mm. how did you, like say you were scratching a certain part? Well, <coughs> I kind of looked at any sort of production as a, as a composition. So it had to have a, a, a beginning, middle and end. And a lot of hip hop and rap music out there, you know, didn't have maybe a bridge or something in it, which is kind of what I did with Crazy Mad Flow tomorrow in it. Mm -hmm. and, and these but but it had to have a beginning middle and end mm -hmm. you know to me you know and it, it didn't matter that he wasn't telling a story with a beginning middle and end or yeah. or, a, or maybe even a normal chorus you know what i mean but yeah. basic in for concrete show i think it was literally just sort of intro um beat chorus beat beat chorus beat a little bit different and and in, and in the end can i just quickly say something i just remembered mm. When we went to uh, Warner Chapel, mm -hmm. Marble Arch, remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we had yeah. to carry the JBLs up yeah. Park, Park <laughs> Lane. <laughs> we had to carry. Because we, um, legs, man. Yeah, we, big Mark, ass, we, big we, um, we took Richard's monitors from his house mm. and took them to the studio. It's so cheeky. like. Yeah. But we broke down on Park Lane, so we're just walking up Park Lane <laughs> with JBLs. <laughs> Then to Marble Arch. I broke down and was like, I'll fucking leave it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then um, we got there. And I remember the engineer was a fucking arsehole. He was just not mixing the song properly, was yeah, he? Like, yeah. there's a lot to be said for kind of your process and a kind of a kind of intuitive way of making music instead of it just being cold. And I always said that um, hip hop was a uh, in those days was was an art movement. You know, it was it was it was so prolific and, and interesting in the way that people put all the stuff together, the way they did the art, the dance, you know, the, the, the lyrics and the, and the music. It's, it's like a, it's like a, it's like an art movement, like surrealism mm. or, or I don't know, uh, cubism or whatever. Mm. But, um, and that's, that's what I feel is a little bit missing. It is a bit cold. Um, if you look at hip hop now, obviously I'm speaking like an old man. Like, oh, oh, hip hop on TikTok. Like, um, but, <laughs> If you look at it now, like it's just it is just drum machines and, and, and lyrics, which is yeah, yeah, it's all right. It's, it's clubby, isn't it? It's like <coughs> clubby music. Do you, do you not feel though that you know when we were young, our parents and the elders didn't really get us, and now uh, we put ourselves in that position? Yeah, quite possibly. But there was always a couple of songs that my mom would say, "What is that song?" And she, I knew she didn't say she liked it, but I knew that's why she was asking. And one of those songs I remember specifically it was "Lyrical Maniac." It was Lyrical <laughs> Maniac. Uh, I'm joking. And <laughs> it, was, it was actually, it was Lyrical Maniac. And it was, um, they reminisce over you. I used to play it all the time. Okay. I didn't write that one. I know, I don't, I don't think you did. No, I didn't no. write that one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, CL Smooth, that's right. Yeah, 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 well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so there's songs that kind of, I don't know, I don't know what I'm saying, but there's some music that's it kind of, no matter what age or what. Yeah, but it can cross what, genres what and everything. Yeah, 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 yeah cross yeah. generations and everything, yeah. 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 But, but do you not feel that there is an element of us, like, basically being closed-eared because... But I, I can listen to their music and say it sounds cheap. Mum and dad, my mum and dad now, yeah? <clears throat> a band, 
instruments, everything playing the music, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, looking at us now, ripping it off by sampling it. Mm -hmm. But what we were sampling <laughs> was real stuff rather than this, you know, so much as it. You know, don't get me wrong, when hip-hop started with the electro and all of that sort of stuff, you know, we were fascinated and blown away by it, but it wasn't, you know, what I wanted to create. Mm. It wasn't what I wanted to do. It wasn't, I wasn't an electro type person. I was never into like the metronome house type stuff either. You know mm. what I mean? So, you know, it, <clears throat> but I can listen to some soulful house for argument's sake. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is that, you know, the music had to have some sort of like instruments and some sort of, I like things that are put together. You know, it's the Curtis Mayfields, it's the Isaac Hayes, it's, you know, the Quincy's, it's, 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 it's the Leroy Hudson's. It's those type of people in this world that, you know, when they, they put music together. Mm -hmm. They don't, you know, and uh, you know, and then it's a piece. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just a chorus, middle and end sort of mm -hmm. thing. Do you know what I mean? It's straight. You know, so that's what I like. The creativity. About. Yeah, I like, that's, what, that's what I like about, it and I, that's what I think is lost. Yeah. So going a long way around it, that's what I think is lost. Okay. Yeah, the creativity and, yeah. and and how music is composed. Music isn't composed anymore. It's just put together. Do you, you think it's a um, case of like? Uh, what the record companies and the industry has dictated that's made the kids go to that or is this something that the kids actually you know the youngers actually kind of decided this is the direction yeah going. yeah but you know you still got people all right i was saying to somebody the other day that was talking about making music and mm. and, and, and i was trying to explain that same concept to him and i said listen to um clouds was it clouds across the sky solange yeah. Produced by Sidney yeah, Raphael. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I said, and then you, you know, and, and then listen to any other flipping pop tune you want. Mm. <laughs> you, you'll hear the difference straight yeah, away. Yeah, and yeah. if you don't hear the difference, then I can't explain nothing to you. Mm. Mm -hmm. I also think um, the infrastructure of music is so different now, and it's so quick and instant yeah. that nothing is special because yeah. if somebody makes a record now, finishes the record now in the states, mm -hmm. you could have it on your phone within. 20 minutes. Exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, Less. once the distributors yeah. agree days going live, it's live, right. isn't it? Yeah. Like, it's like, like, if you think about Top of the Pops, and then that's something, if you heard that something like was going to be on there, mm. it'd be a big deal and it'd be like, you'd have to wait a few days, basically. I don't know if you used to do this, I used to record songs off the radio and then I used to write down the lyrics to the songs and in the, it took me ages to write down all the lyrics and I got most of them wrong. Yeah. And then yeah. you flip the lyrics. letters round the road coffee shop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, cut and paste. Just, just rearrange a few phrases and there you go. Fred's in, yeah? <laughs> That's how you found the record. And they the never shop. found out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no. <laughs> um, so I wrote down all the lyrics to Rap is Delight yeah. and Call for Cats on the same oh. day. But as soon as it went digital, like everything was online, iTunes and... Um, not Napster so much, but just everything being online and just accessible instantly. And then it just felt like the people had been removed from the whole process. I'll I tell you what uh, I was watching the other day. It was quite interesting. It's the story. Um, I was watching a story where Noel Gallagher was talking about how, how quickly they went from, like, I don't know, the first Top of the Pops <coughs> uh, moment to... Nebworth or whatever, yeah. like it was crazy. Like it was only four years, yeah. and mm -hmm. there's no way that could happen now. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. because people don't go to gigs as much, people don't buy physical records. Did you Did you see them at the venue? I think it was '93. No, nah, I've um, got a story about them though. Oh really? Yeah, me and my friend snuck into a sound check in Electric Ballroom, Kentish Town, okay. uh, Camden, and um, I say snuck in. My friend was there the night before, and he just got in, and we saw we saw Liam and Noel do like all the hit songs like but in front of about nine people. We ended up back in a hotel in Notting Hill Gate hanging out with another band. You remember Ocean Colour Scene? Who? Ocean Colour Scene. Okay, like, yeah, they, yeah. Were, they were big yeah, and nice. Yeah. But we ended up hanging out with them in a hotel in the foyer just talking about, talking about, I talked to the bass player about breaks. There's guys that are in boy bands that are deep hip hop people. Mm, yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? So hip hop really tell you what, a lot. Now that I've yeah. got you, have just reminded me of the story. <laughs> when I first started working at Apple, uh, I don't know if you remember the Apple Store on Regent Street, but yeah, it had yeah, a big I, cinema yeah. at the back. Yeah, and I remember. As a kind of, they do, they did a lot of kind of um, not meet and greets, but uh, the managers would introduce themselves to the new staff and all that kind mm -hmm. of thing. So I'm sitting there with about 200 people or whatever, the new people and some of the old people. And one of the managers goes up to the remember the big screen, mm -hmm. and he goes, "Yeah, my name's F I won't say his name, but my name's blah blah blah." <laughs> Uh, um, uh, da, da, da. He just give all their stats and what they like. I like a bit of football, da, 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 da. so you get to know them or whatever. And he mm -hmm. goes, yeah, well, I'm a really big fan of British hip-hop. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, shit. 
So now I'm listening. And he goes, yeah, one of my, my favourite MC is MC Blade. Have I ever told oh, wow. you the story? Yeah, you, you did, but I forgot. I forgot <laughs> it. You just yeah, reminded this is so me. So mad. So he yeah. goes, yeah, one of my one of my um one of my favourite MCs is MC Blade, and the record cover comes up on the screen in the Apple Store. I'm like, shit, I'm on that fucking record. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um afterwards, I talked to him like. I go, Phil, you know, I'm actually on a record. He looks at me, he goes, what? You know Blade? I was like, yeah, I know him pretty well because yeah. I was on that record. I was yeah. like, fuck you. So anyway, I forget about it. About two weeks later, I get a call to the office and I think, fuck you, know, what have I done? And the guy <laughs> sitting in his office on his computer looking at the album, he goes, where are you on this record? And I have oh, to, I'm standing in this office going, yeah. yeah, that's a bit of my head on the front cover. If you flip it over, then then dun, 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 dun. So yeah, that was, that was a mad sort yeah. of crossover. What was really good about those days is that you know, the, the unity, like we all pulled together. Yeah, you know? I also think um, the hip hop scene in London was so small that it couldn't have been any other way, right? It wasn't, it was such a, a small place and a small amount of people from at the start making hip hop. It was like, there was no, the it was a community. It was, it a, was community, a community. Right? But then, you know, I mean, with the best will in the world, you know, being young, we always thought we were the baddest though as well, you know, I mean? you know, which meant that your your neighbour wouldn't buy your neighbour's record. So we yeah, would, you know, yeah, yeah, you yeah. understand? It was all like, uh, so we wouldn't buy another ri a rap artist, UK rap artist record. Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So we wouldn't promote in each other the right way, you know, in spirit, maybe when you met each other at shows and stuff and mm. made you connections and then probably did collaborations, yeah, fine. But, you know, we weren't actually going out there buying each other's records and that's all I was going to say on that. So where did we fit in? Because we were actually supporting each other. Of course. You know, it's just it's just the way it was, I suppose. It wasn't as easy to, as, as we've just been saying. It's not as easy as today as to just do something and get it out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> it wasn't that easy, you know. Yeah. I've still got a big old 16-track um, Fostex tape. Really? About, yeah. I know. I, was, I think I was saying to you, I've got an Ampex tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's got... Yeah. It's got Master Mix is handwriting on it, and there are uh -huh. no concrete showers on that. And it's not just me on there, there's loads yeah. of people on there. Yeah. And I've never, I've played never, it, yeah. um, never played it. Wow. About your artwork, um, I mean, yeah. is there anything you want to promote? Um, um, yeah, I mean, if people want to check it out uh, on Instagram, it's CBA underscore 71. So if, um, if anyone's interested and wants to have a look, okay. it's kind of random stuff, but you know, mm -hmm. so some big stuff coming soon. Okay. Mm. Uh, how about you? I'd like to say um, big up to my cousin Baron, my brother Ian and Goddy, who were always, uh, there. <laughs> always, always there. Always, always yeah, there. They when were, it come man. to Cobalt yeah. 60, they were yeah. always yeah. there. Yeah. So, but they, they, to be fair, they were always there in the early days for me as well. Yeah. They, like I said, yeah. we were one. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Like they, were, they were the extended unit of our group. I was going to say as a last thing, like um, what people might not know is that a lot of the sessions that were around, like with Hard Noise and Sun and Noise, mm. There were twenty percent music, eighty percent laughter. Fun. Yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah, we used to we yeah, we used to were howling with laughter down yeah, there. Where was it? Burma's in it. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> but just just for yeah. clarification, you only ever made one record. Yeah. With a double sided, double A side. That's Under Cobalt, Cobalt 60, 60, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. So oh. have you but made other records? Since? Well, we featured on a few um, yeah, featured Sun and Noise bits records. And about three there, different yeah. Sun and Noise records were okay. featured on. Mm. Um, but then I produced for... But not uh, as Cobalt 60, as individual. Yeah, like as an individual, I produced outside for She Rockers. And, okay. And, well, obviously, um, Sun and Noise as well. Mm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, what can I say apart from it's been an absolute pleasure having you here. And it's great to hear the stories behind the stories, behind the stories that never got told. Mm -hmm. For anybody <laughs> interested in what they're doing or what they were doing back in the days even, um, please follow them on their connection pages. All the relevant links can be found in the description below. Comment, like, share. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click on the bell to receive the notifications. Until next time, stay safe, be lucky, and see you soon. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys. Cheers, Blake. Thanks, fun, man. Cheers. Absolute pleasure. <laughs>